what's one of the worst things that's ever happened to you on vacation? Maybe your flight got canceled, you got sick, you lost your passport, or your hotel was a disaster. According to Passport Photo Online, 92% of Americans say they've had at least one travel nightmare in their life. We pay good money on vacation to create great memories. We don't want chaos, challenge, uncertainty. But sometimes bad things can become great stories. Based on my own travels, I learned just how memorable chaos can be. About 20 years ago, my family went on a Mediterranean cruise at the end of which we went to Florence, Italy. This is the train station in Florence, the starting point of the most arduous one-mile trek of my life. <laughs> in those days when I planned a vacation, I put everything on a spreadsheet. That way I could maximize every moment and pack in as much experience as possible. According to my spreadsheet, our train would arrive in Florence at 3 p.m. We take a taxi to our hotel, drop our bags, then stroll to the Academia Gallery to see this guy. We had a 4.30 reservation. And when you're on a spreadsheet vacation, you can't just shift <laughs> command and expand the spreadsheet cells. So imagine my surprise when our train arrived in Florence at 3 p.m. We collect all our bags, go to the curb, and discover there's a taxi strike. <laughs> this is before Uber, and our hotel is like a mile away. But we can walk, right? It's only a mile. The map describes that one mile as mostly flat. <laughs> the map is a liar. <laughs> I was elected the family Sherpa, so I had 50-pound suitcases, white-knuckled in either hand, stooped over, bags slung up and down my arms. It's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, blazing sun, cobblestones toppling over our wheeled bags. But I had one focus, one singular purpose, chiseled in marble. See the David at 4.30. <laughs> because if we missed our reservation, we'd have to waste hours in line, hours not on the spreadsheet. So imagine on the, what felt like mile 10 of our one mile walk, we came to a stop. Our wheeled bags had toppled over yet again and I just lost it. We stood there, sweat dripping, exhausted, tears of frustration, and that was just me. <laughs> I'm standing there, not moving. That moment, there were two statues in town, the David and the Thor. <laughs> we saw amazing sights on that trip, but that afternoon in Florence is one of my strongest memories. Why? Frustration? Exhaustion? Heat stroke? Emotions made that day memorable. Millions of people have seen the David, but nobody has had an experience like mine. In the travel industry, if you call someone to help you plan a vacation, you're not looking for chaos. You don't want your bags to be lost or your hotel to be overbooked. But if you really want an experience you'll never forget, you need to embrace chaos on vacation. Obviously, nobody would ever market their business that way. Entropy vacations, <laughs> chaos cruises, <laughs> not a big seller. But vacations you'll never forget, that's what we all want. Neuroscience confirms why I recall that day in Florence. Turns out you're more likely to remember experiences that include emotion. And the more vivid the emotion, the stronger your memory. For example, if you have delicious blueberry pancakes for breakfast. Then later that day, you run into a grizzly bear. Which experience do you think you would remember more? <laughs> Clearly, my recommendation is when you travel, let bad things happen. I realize now that I went into that trip with a 
fixed mindset. My travel expectations were contained, even constrained. Each destination, each experience, each hour was a spreadsheet cell, planned out, mapped out, but with no room to live out. You can't plan for chaos, but you can simulate it. And you don't have to do something like vacation on a theme park island filled with dinosaurs. Embracing chaos when you travel means going deep. Destination, explore, embrace people. Deep. My first ever vacation as an adult was at a Club Med in Mexico. The international clientele would typically wear Speedos, so I'll, I'll spare you on your selfies. Aww. Club Med, Club Med began in 1950 in post-war Europe. The idea was to provide an affordable, all-inclusive vacation for middle-class workers. There were tents on a Mediterranean beach, communal bathrooms, meals with strangers. It was the ultimate one-star vacation. <laughs> By the 1980s, when I went, there were now buildings with actual rooms. But there was no phone, no alarm clock, no 50-inch TV. And true story, no lock on your room door. You didn't spend time in your room. You explored the destination. So what do I remember from that trip? I learned how to windsurf because well, my life depended on it. <laughs> you see, with windsurfing, it's easy to take a few lessons on key points like standing. So I'm feeling pretty confident. And before you know it, I'm two miles offshore. 20 knots of wind blowing in my 1980s hair. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I signed a waiver. They're not worried about me. In that moment, I knew the only way I was getting back was to sail directly into the wind for two miles without falling. Pretty exciting, which is why I remember it. Today, when a lot of us vacation, we focus not on exploration, but on indulgence. We're more likely to explore a pina colada at the swim-up bar. But when you explore the destination, instead of swim up, you swim out beyond the expected. Over two million tourists came to Alaska in 2019. Most probably expected to see the big three, glaciers, bears, and Denali. But as with any destination, there's so much more to explore. If a vacationer asked you what to see, what would you recommend? Drag shows. <laughs> That's right, they're good. <laughs> What's your must-see Alaska? Or wherever you call home, what page would you add to the guidebook? As a traveler, we don't ask these questions because we don't know where to start. How do I know if I'm asking the right person what I should see? Here's one tip. If you go to the front desk of your hotel and you ask, where's an interesting place to eat? And they say, there's a Chili's down the block. Maybe get a second opinion. <laughs> go beyond the comfort food sites. Whatever your unique interest or passion, take out your phone and Google it. Anchorage, live music this weekend. You'd be amazed what you find. Now, when you get there, of course you're going to take pictures. But what if you also learn something about the destination? Take the picture of the David, but also learn how Michelangelo created his masterpiece. Imagine if you came home from an Alaskan vacation and you had to give a report on what you discovered. My summer vacation. Show off your pictures, yes, but also share what you learned. Denali is the tallest mountain in North America. The national park was created in 1917 to preserve wildlife like the doll sheep. Then tell people what you know about doll sheep. Destination explore, that's the first part of deep. The second part is embrace people. A researcher at the University of Texas at Austin surveyed 700 travelers. He found you're 20% more likely 
to remember your vacation if you travel with a mix of family and friends, not just family. So if you make friends when you travel, your trip's going to be more memorable. On my honeymoon, my wife and I went to the Bahamas for two weeks, and it rained nonstop the entire first week, not on the spreadsheet. <laughs> because of the rain, we made new friends. And we did the other thing you do on your honeymoon. We played Scrabble with those friends. <laughs> Actually, we played dirty word Scrabble. It wasn't a Michelin-rated restaurant, a Broadway show, or the top of the Eiffel Tower. It was a board game. Of that entire two-week vacation, that's what I remember most. The new friends we made and the new words we learned. <laughs> Earlier, I, I mentioned our Mediterranean vacation. At the start of that trip, before we got to Florence, we flew into Venice and discovered the airline lost one of our bags, the one with all our daughter's clothes in it. Our cruise was leaving that day at noon, with or without us. With only a few hours, we had to find a wardrobe for a six-year-old. We were in an unfamiliar city, stores we'd never heard of. It'd be easy to give up and say to our daughter, we'll just get you stuff on the ship, which probably would have made her look like a 70-year-old retiree from Boca Raton. <laughs> Sensing that wasn't the best choice, my wife and I asked a question. Who do we know in Venice? Turns out we now know the family that ran the small hotel we just stayed in. We raced back there, and they gave us advice where to shop. Our daughter got to look like an actual six-year-old. When you embrace the unknown, when you embrace people, you make friends who can help you through uncertainty. So back to Florence, taxiless Florence, on our cobblestone trek to see the David. I'm standing on the sidewalk, sweat dripping, exhausted, museum reservation at 4.30. I don't think we're going to make it, which, to be honest, felt pretty terrible. We came to Florence to see this one piece of art. I felt like it was my job as dad to make this experience happen. And I realized in that moment, with all my planning for everything that went right on this trip, a taxi strike was the one thing I couldn't plan for. I looked down at our suitcases, toppled over yet again. And one by one, I picked them up, and we kept going. At the end of the Florence Death March, as I now like to refer to it, <laughs> we got to our hotel, dropped our bags. Then, like contestants on The Amazing Race, we ran to the museum, arriving at 4.28 PM. <laughs> Air conditioning never felt so good. We saw the David. The next day, with more activities planned, my wife looked at the spreadsheet, and <laughs> <laughs> they slept in, went for brunch, had a horse-drawn carriage ride. And thankfully, I'm still married. <laughs> Though I did agree to never again use a spreadsheet on vacation. Having an open mind when you travel is its own form of transformation. And it can lead to the most rewarding and memorable experiences. When you travel, 90% of the time, things go the way you expect. The other 10%, that's where you're tested. It's an opportunity to discover what you're made of, a chance to feel alive. When you travel, it's a reminder you are alive. The reason I remember that day is not because I saw the David. It's because I saw me. Now, if you have a vacation without chaos, go make your own. Go deep. Explore your destination. Create a few spontaneous moments where you go beyond the boundaries. Sail to a new place. Look around. Immerse yourself. As you explore, embrace people. Decide to meet at least one new person. Learn about them. Be open. Be curious. You don't have to eat with strangers, but you can make one new friend. And the good news, 
you don't have to wait for vacation to put this into practice. We could all start today. Let's make TEDx Anchorage 2023 memorable. When we're done here at the intermission, go out and meet someone new, one new person. Start with me, but start today. Whether it's halfway around the world or just down the road, when you embrace the unknown, you'll create memories that last a lifetime. Thank you.